Hello all and welcome to this video walkthrough on importing an Excel spreadsheet into the tax preparation program. In this video, I'm going to show you the steps needed to successfully import the items on the spreadsheet into the tax program using the import wizard. Note that for this video, the Excel document has already been either manually created, exported out of the tax, or created from another program such as Scan. So let's begin. As you can see, I have already opened the return to which I want to import this spreadsheet. This is an individual 1040 return, however, the process will be the same for all return types. To begin, we will first need to open the section we want to import to. This can be any section in the return that has a grid on it. For purposes of this video, we are going to import in a multi-tab gains and losses spreadsheet. So under income and deductions, I want to select gains and losses. On the section 1, stocks, securities, and other non-passive transactions, we will need to select the import button in the upper right hand corner of the grid. By selecting this, it will launch the import wizard. First, we will need to browse out to where the file is located at, select it, and then click open. I also recommend checking the box to save the return before importing. Once the file is selected and the box is checked, we will click the select template button. This is going to bring us to the mapping screen. The default template will automatically be selected. However, you have the option to change this as well. Simply click the drop down for that box and you can see the available options you can select from. In the Excel source sheet drop down, we can use this to switch between the multiple tabs within the spreadsheet. You can also click the preview button next to the Excel source sheet to see the actual spreadsheet data. We will use the start at row and stop at row to tell the system which row we want to begin importing from and which row to stop the import process at. So I'm going to actually change that to a 6. That just tells the system that the 6th row is where my actual data begins at. Next, we will need to define what the columns are in the spreadsheet. In the source column, use the drop down to tell the system what column in the Excel spreadsheet matches the grid column on the mapping window. If you are not sure, we can use the Preview button to look at the document. If you do not want a particular column imported in, on the mapping window select Not Mapped from the drop-down. This will prevent that column from being imported in. Once all the columns you want imported are defined, we will select Next. On this next screen, we will be given the option to append the data or replace the data. If you are just adding more items to what you already have in the tax return, we will select Append. If you are updating the items that are already present in the return and do not want the old ones, we will select Replace. For this video, I'm going to select Append. After you select the option you need, the system will validate the information on the spreadsheet to see if it matches the field criteria that it is importing into. Once the validation process completes, we will select Import to continue. Depending on how many rows you are importing into the tax return, it could take several minutes. Once it completes, select Finish to finalize the process. Now we can see the items imported into the return. Since we have multiple tabs in the spreadsheet, we will need to repeat this process for each tab. So I'll go back up to the Import button, select Browse and find the file that I want to import in. I'll select Select Template. On the mapping screen, we're going to drop down the Excel source sheet to be sheet number 2, or tab 2. We can change our rows again, map everything out, select Next. This time we want to make sure that we select Append. It's going to revalidate the process. And we'll click Import. Once the import process is completed, we can see that the system has added the additional items to the ones that were already there from the first import. That's going to conclude our video on how to import in items from an Excel spreadsheet. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you would like to view more articles on this subject, please visit us at support.cch.com and search our knowledge base for these titles or the article numbers listed below them. Again, thank you for watching this video.